Hey guys, this is Corinder here from Androidify and welcome to Android App Development for Beginners number 3. Um, in the previous video we talked about what are views and view groups in Android and in this video we will talk about two specific types of view groups which are linear layout and relative layout. If you haven't checked out that video, the link for it is in the description. Now let's start with linear layout. Uh, linear layout is a view group that can organize its children views either vertically or horizontally. The children views can either be lined up below each other or next to each other. Um, here, as you can see, that there's a um, vertical linear layout where children are stacked up below each other. And here's a horizontal linear layout where the children are next to each other. Um, here are the XML attributes, um, Android orientation. Uh, equals vertical, header orientation equals horizontal, layout width and layout height. There can be three different values for layout width and layout height. Uh, number one, wrap content, number two, match parent, and number three, custom values. So let's start with wrap content. Well, if you assign wrap content as the value, then the view's boundaries will wrap its content. Uh, let's say you have a text view that says school here, and if you add more text in the XML, I like school, then its boundaries will grow larger to wrap the larger text. Match parent. As you might have guessed by the name, the views have the same height and width as its parent. If the parent has a height of 360 dips and width of 360 dips, then the views with match parent value will have the same width and height as its parent. Since here, um, the linear layout has uh, the layout width and layout height set to match parent, which is the entire screen, this text view, uh, which says school, is going to, of course, cover the entire screen and the text which says I like school is gonna get cut off because the first text view is gonna take up the entire screen. The third and the last one is custom values. You can set a custom number as the value for both width and the height. You can also set a custom number as the value for both the height and the width. For example, the layout width uh, for a certain text view could be 33 dips and the layout height could be 150 dips as the value. Um, of course you can have different heights and widths for all the views in Android. For example, for a certain text view, you can set its height to be 100 dips and its width to be match parent, which means that the width of a certain text view is going to take up the entire screen horizontally, but in terms of the height, it's only gonna take up 100 dips of space. Relative layout. Uh, in a relative layout, you can arrange views that are either relative to the parent or in relation to other views. Uh, relative to parent. Well, uh, when the views are relative to parent, then the position of those views is controlled by the relative layout itself. Relative layout decides where the views should be located on the screen. You can assign, let's say, a button to the top left corner of the screen or an image at the center of the screen. Here are the XML attributes, Android layout um, center horizontal. It aligns a view to the center of the screen horizontally. Layout center in parent assigns, aligns a view to the center of the screen, both horizontally and vertically. So it's gonna be right in the middle of the screen. Center vertical, it's only going to align a view uh, to the center of the screen vertically. Um, align parent bottom aligns the view to the bottom left of the screen. Uh, align parent right it's going to align a view to the left side of the screen, align parent right, it's going to align the view to the right side of the screen, and so on and so forth. By default, a view is located at the top left-hand corner of the screen, and all of these attributes have the value of true or false. Here, as you can see, if you have Android align parent top set to true, then the view is going to be located here. Or if you set the value of center vertical to be true, then it's going to be located here, and same with the rest of these. So, relative to children. When the views are relative to other views, then they are placed based upon the location of other views. Now let's say that you have a text view. You can arrange that text view so it is to the right of an image and at the bottom of another text view. Now, unlike the previous attributes, now, unlike the previous attributes, these attributes do not have a true-false value. Instead, they require an ID of other views. Android ID. And 
an ID basically sets an identity of a view so that other views can call that specific view. When other views call that view, they can recognize that view by its ID. Like how a person has a name that identifies him, so when other people call that person by his or her name, that person can respond to other people. Uh, to declare an ID, use the following attribute, Android colon ID equals add symbol ID plus forward slash and then the name of the ID. You only use the plus symbol the first time you declare it. Once declared, you use the value of the ID without the plus symbol. So here, you declare the ID for the second button for the very first time, so you use the plus symbol. But here, when you actually use that value, you do not use the plus symbol. So since this button is going to position itself below the, the first button, it's going to require an ID of that view of that button so it can position itself below it. Now XML attributes. Here are a couple of XML attributes that position views relative to other views. Android layout above, it aligns a view above another view. Layout below, aligns a view below another view. And then layout to the left of, so to the left of um, a different view. To the right of, to the right of a different view. Align bottom, it's going to align the bottom of your view with the bottom edge of another view. Align left, it's going to align the left edge of a view with the left edge of another view. Align right, it's going to align the right edge of a view with the right edge of another view. Align top, it's going to align the top of a view with the top edge of another view. Uh, multiple view groups. Now, you can combine different view groups to make a sophisticated layout for your app. What I mean is that you can have a linear layout as the root view that has one child view which could be a relative layout. Now, that relative layout can have multiple children like a couple of text views and the buttons. So here's an example. The root view of this app is a linear layout which has a text view as a child view and another text view and a couple of checkboxes and another text view as the as the child view and then here you have a linear layout as a child so this linear, linear layout has the orientation of horizontal and then outside the linear layout it has a button as the child view so let's jump over to Android Studio and apply what we just learned